Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're gonna to review a 2014 Aston Martin Vanquish. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, this is my garage, and that is Adam. Missed opportunity to wear a suit. Yeah, we screwed up. We should have been wearing suits and be all bondish and stuff. We didn't and think this far ahead. Little martinis and whatever, but we didn't. There are so many things we could have done that would have made this that much better. Here you go. 2014 Aston Martin Vanquish. Yeah, this is the big V12. I'm kind of excited about this because they are beautiful. This is an amazing car. Yeah, before we get into that, real quick, if you want to support us, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell and go visit normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for your car and also go check out ngsupercars.com. See what cars we have in inventory. Unfortunately, this car is not for sale. It is not in our inventory, so don't even ask. The owner does not want to sell it. In fact, the owner is the guy who bought our Ferrari F430 basket case car. And that's why this car is here because he was swapping them out for the day and he said, hey, why don't you do a review on my car? So we are, here we, we go. Should have, we should have told people that we sold this to our friends. So oh yeah, we should, yeah. So they could yell at us more. Let's check out this amazing car and talk about it and take it out for a spin. So first of all, the funny thing is about this car is it's very, very heavy. And it seems like it's gonna be a big car and it's kind of long, but it's like the presence of it doesn't feel big. So I don't, I don't think, like, it's not taking up an abnormal amount of space in the garage. So like when they had the Ferrari FF in here, it was huge. I mean, that was a big car. This thing doesn't seem big, but it is a very beautiful car. I love the lines of these cars. I think they look amazing. This is kind of like their flagship car at the time. So it's got the big 5.9 liter V12. And crazy enough, everything on this car is carbon fiber. So all of the panels are carbon fiber. And you'd think, oh, that's gonna make it way something reasonable, but no, it still weighs 3,800 pounds. I don't know how they turn an all carbon fiber car into 3,800 pounds. I mean, the seats can't weigh like a thousand pounds, so that ain't it. And I'm pretty sure the engine doesn't weigh 2,000 pounds, so that's not it. I don't know what they did wrong, but whatever. So there's a few really interesting features on this car that I'm a fan of. First of all, we got some nice carbon fiber accents where it's just exposed right there on the sides and actually you have like a diffuser that's carbon fiber, it's kind of exposed right there. That kind of stuff just looks cool. But one of the unique features of these Astons is of course the, I guess they're called like the swan doors or whatever, where they, they swing out and up. So if you notice, it's actually tilting up. So if we sit kind of level, there you go. Which is a great idea because it allows it to clear curbs and you don't ding your doors and you're not worried about this hitting something. What's also fascinating about these doors is they stop anywhere. See? Look at that. Well, well oh. At some point gravity is Gravity just took over. over, but there's no detents. So you don't have it where it's like, oh, you can only put it here or here. No, you can kind of put it wherever, which is also again handy. You know, people park too close and you can't get it just right. So you open it just as much as you can and then you're all set. We've got the big carbon ceramic brakes, big old wheels. It should be a lot of fun. Of course, it is a Grand Tour, so we expect some comfort. So I just wanted to point out, in order to unlatch the hood, you have to pull this because, you know, every other hood latch on Earth is completely the same except this one. So I was struggling with that for a good minute and Adam was teasing me. I was about to start recording, but I was too slow to get to the camera. Yeah. Funny enough, they rounded up to six liters, even though it's actually a 5.9. All right, Aston, you're already lying to us. That's not cool. But you can see that has a big engine. I mean, it takes up the whole thing. It is kind of an actual mid engine. So if you see right here is about the axle point. So most of the engine is behind. So it's a front mid. And of course, you'll notice this is also carbon fiber where it's not painted. You can see. Oh. There you go, you can see that's carbon fiber as well. So basically everything's carbon fiber where possible. 570 horsepower, 465 foot pounds of torque. Functional scoops. Yeah, functional air scoops. Or, I, mean, I don't know if functional is well, the right word, but real. Yeah, not real fake. scoops, not bullshit. Oh yes, and hand built in England. Final inspection by Matt. Robbins. Yes, good job, Matt. Way to spec this car. I mean, this is obviously one of the best points about this car is this big old V12. It's hard to find V12s anymore. Sadly, this year, this generation of Van uh, Vanquish, you could not get in a manual. So this is an automatic, but this is 2014, which means they switched it to the eight speed instead of the six speed which also means that it goes faster. So we will get to experience that in a little bit. I was just closing the hood and I had a note, wow, that is a light hood. That's pretty impressive. So again, where's the rest of the weight? I don't know. This is one of those pieces that I'm pretty sure if you damage it, probably totals the car. <laughs> 
jumping into the interior, you expect nothing less than a sea of leather. Everything is leather. I mean, even the shift paddles have a tiny bit of leather on them. There's just leather, 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 and then like some carpet and leather. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Alcantara, nice. So leather and Alcantara everywhere you can see. Strangely, the steering wheel is kind of squared up on the sides. So it's a little bit unusual looking. It's kind of got a strange look. Another fascinating thing about Aston's that drives me nuts is they put the seat controls in the center. I always screw that up because you start fidgeting on the side and you're like, where the hell is it? And then you're like, oh yeah, there it is in the center. And of course we have the parking brake on the left side. By the way, we have this super cool like glass infused key fob. Very interesting, except for I have one complaint. So, well, two things. Number one, if you lose this, they're like two, three thousand dollars, so don't lose it. And the second thing is there's no place for like a keychain hook or anything like that, which is a problem because this is really expensive and you know, what you, you're gonna sit on your desk and it's gonna go like sliding away. I have a problem with keys that don't have a place for a key hook like a, a ring or something so I can hang it with the rest of my keys because I'm gonna lose it. So like Tesla's had the stupid little Tesla car and there's no hook. As Adam was so astutely pointing out, the reason it doesn't have any spot for the key ring is because to start this car, you actually have, have to push it in there like that. So we have like this uh, screen thing and it kind of unfolds when you turn on the car. Gauges on this are a little weird because they go opposite directions. That always weirds me out as well. We have this very clean, just black, interface right here where it just looks like a almost like a piano you know it's just very elegant everything about this car is simple it's really easy to deal with these buttons fairly basic simple driver's car system also of note like the little speakers right there pop up when you turn on the car because you know we don't want speakers showing when the car is off single cup holder because you know screw your passenger it's a nice pretty elegant interior. It's just everything about it is just classy AF. All right, YouTube, let's go take it out for a spin. Ooh, V12, Vanquish. It's very pleasant already. Ooh, it's got a nice grumble to it, like nice and growly. We got butt coolers. I love the butt coolers. Really quiet in here, the seats are Super comfortable. The steering wheel's kind of big. Now I'm sitting here looking at this thing. Oh, we have adaptive dampening, normal and sport. We'll leave it at normal until we get to the fun part. Cause you know, this is supposed to be a grand tour. It's supposed to be luxurious and comfortable. And that's what we're targeting. There's no trying to make this thing like a true sports car. It is a grand touring car. So we will go on a grand tour and it should be pleasant and we'll have tea and crumpets. You gotta admit, a big old V12 is pretty awesome, and having all that torque out of a V12 is always a great thing. So 465 foot-pounds of torque. This thing goes zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds, supposedly. That's really impressive for 3,800 pounds. I have to say, I hate the, uh, the rev counter going opposite direction. It's kind of weird. Shifts are a little sluggish, but not terrible. A lot of power. So we're in fourth gear, going to the speed limit, you know, you put it down and that's a good amount of torque. It's actually quite responsive, really linear progression of power. I like that. So I feel like it's gonna be really easy control. Downshifts are a little eh. Sound of the engine is actually pretty good too. Okay, we're gonna go on to my bumpy road. So we got the suspension normal. We're gonna keep on normal. Yeah, kind of a lazy shift there. Not super impressed with the automatic transmission. I mean, there's not, it's not gonna be as snappy as a single clutch or a dual clutch. Okay, bumpy road. This is the big test for the Grand Tour. Does it handle the bumpy road nice and pleasantly? Well, yeah, that's impressive. I mean, this is a very bouncy, bumpy road and it's not jarring me around. It's very smooth. I don't really feel the, uh, the big shocks, a little bit of interior rattle, but then again, this thing's got 30,000 miles on it. So, you know, it's not a brand new car. Wow, that is very, very smooth for this road. I am actually quite impressed with that. Okay, good job, Aston. So now we're gonna put it in sport for the dampening and 
All right, time to have some fun. Here we go. Let's see how this Grand Tour, let's open it up. Oh, yeah. Spinning those tires. <laughs> All right, coming into some corners. Oh. All right. I mean, for a big, heavy car, it's really, it's body position is great it's all very very little body roll i'm surprised by that and i don't feel the car lunging when i get on the brakes it's actually really planted Ooh, that's impressive doing better than I expected. The handling is really quite good. It's not its not super precise. It's a little vague. I wish it was just a little bit tighter on the steering, but it's smooth. Yeah, it's just a little numb, you know, like I, I don't get a whole lot of feedback on the steering wheel. And it almost is like a, a little too light. Like I've got everything in sport, you know, it's as aggressive as this car can get. And it just kind of feels just a little bit like Again, like we're a grand touring car, it's aimed more towards comfort and it's definitely comfortable. I'm gonna really slow down for this one. I, I'm kind of at a bit of a loss for words because I, I thought I was gonna hate it. And I thought, oh, it's a grand tour. I don't like grand tours generally and usually they're too squishy for me and I'm kind of digging it. I mean, I, I don't know that I would take this over a regular sports car or a mid-engine sports car. They have such a much better feel about the balance and stuff. and. I don't mind having it be a little rough, you know, like cars that are a little bit too tight for me are fine. I don't mind that, but man, this is really quite pleasant. It's just really good. So this car came on our tour of Colorado last year and Daniel, the owner, kept up with us fine. He never really had any trouble keeping up. It's certainly got enough power. It sounds great. It's not over the top loud. There's no resonance, you know, no uh, droning. Yeah, I guess the only complaint I really have is the transmission. I wish the transmission was a dual clutch. It'd be a little bit snappier. It's super soft. It's meant to be that way, you know. It just it's not giving you that kicking kicking the butt. It kind of lazily shifts into the next gear, which again, it's smooth and comfortable. You know, your passenger is not going to get sick from the shifting, jarring them around. It's just pleasant. The big problem with Aston Martins is, of course, the depreciation. Unfortunately, Aston Martins just depreciate like a bomb. That is my biggest fear with these cars. It's part of the reason we don't really want to buy any on the channel, why we're not buying any for the dealership, because they just depreciate so hard and the market's very thin for these cars. So they only made a couple thousand of these things. It's a pretty rare car. So finding a buyer who wants to spend a huge amount of money on one of these cars is really difficult. These were, you know, in excess of two to three hundred thousand dollars new. You can find them well under a hundred thousand dollars right now. I like that the uh, the sh the shift the gear indicator actually turns red when it's time to shift. That's really cool. So, you know, it's not like a boot you in the seat of your pants torque. It's, it's very, very linear and controlled. I don't feel like this car is trying to kill you in any way. It is really quite tame and easy to control. It makes you want to be James Bond. You know, you have a nice, good looking date, go out somewhere pleasant, pull up into the valet, you know, open the cool doors, look kind of dapper. Obviously this is out of my wheelhouse. You know, this is for you guys, not for me. Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing. I, you know, I don't know how to look dapper. I, yeah, it'd be screwed up. There's not a lot to complain about other than the depreciation. That is the big problem. Played and had some fun. Let's just go back to regular drive. And I'll put it into normal mode and take it out of sport. And we'll put the suspension into normal. And let's just drive it as though you're just on a normal drive. Oh, wow, it suddenly became super sluggish. <laughs> like it's, 
it's shift. You know, it's an eight-speed and it's shifting like constantly. Eleven hundred RPMs. It's like we're gonna get the best gas mileage you can out of this giant V12. I mean, you know, if you're driving around as a daily driver, though, that's what you want. So I guess it, you know, checks off that box. Can you daily drive this car? Yeah, no problem. Okay, it already shifted like four times. We'll slam the pedal and it actually skated around a little bit when it downshifted. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, driving in regular drive is, it just kind of underwhelms you very much a daily driver it is no whoa there's something in the road it is very much tuned towards just efficiency and boring and just drive right it's not sporty in any way steering got a little bit more vague we're on the highway that's the thing we're on the highway no engine noise pretty little road noise you know there's something about an Aston Martin that is just cool they're just such a beautiful, elegant car. You just feel cool driving, you know? I mean, it's super rare. There's, like I said, only a couple thousand of these are made. You can pull up and it just looks appropriate in so many settings. You know, you can look appropriate in a business setting. Oh, okay, normal mode and cornering there, a lot of body roll. A lot more than was with the Sport. So yeah, those, uh, those modes clearly make a difference. That felt very different than it did before. This is a, a good universal car. If you're not trying to be too aggressive, I could see having this as a daily driver. It's not so in your face that every time you go anywhere, people would be like, oh my God. Uh. You know, like you pull up in a bright Ferrari, a bright red Ferrari or a bright orange Lamborghini and people lose their minds and you know, I'm gonna have to take pictures and stuff. You pull up in this and people are gonna be like, huh, what is that? It looks really nice. It's a beautiful car, but it's not like crazy. And it, you know, it doesn't have that same connotation you know it's kind of funny is even though it is a pretentious car it doesn't convey pretentiousness you can arrive at an event and people aren't gonna be like oh that guy's a douchebag they're like no oh that's a classy mother <laughs> that guy is succeeding i'm doing good in life i have enough money i can throw on a car and have it depreciate away all of that money but i have fine tastes so i want just a beautiful car that's gonna cost me a lot of money that pretty much sums up Aston Martin. Beautiful throwaway money. Nice, very nice. Go ahead and uh, pull the um, roadside assistance number up since this is a uh, Aston Martin. We'll just make sure that uh, we've got that on quick dial. So one thing I noticed is uh, when I put in the reverse, the side view mirrors pitched it down so that you could see where the uh, wheels were. The blinker noise is kind of loud. There are volume controls down here, cruise control, and then you can put it in sport and then stiffen up the suspension as well. All the controls on here, except for the um, transmission buttons and a couple of buttons down here are like the captive touch. So it's like, you know, there's no physical button. What, ooh, man, that's a heck of a, what's it called, heptic feedback? That sounds terrible. They should have done a better job with that. Wow, that just sounds bad. I like the, there's solid feedback when you pull the paddle. It's not, uh, what the, oh no. All right, we, um, because of where the uh, seat controls are, I just adjusted my seat while I was driving. So uh, that's gonna be a negative for the car. It's got gobs of power as you would expect. I mean, the downshifts are fine. The upshifts are fine. And do you hear that satisfying click when you shift? I love that. That is a very solid, just like, mm, you know you got it. Now this thing is heavy, but it does have adjustable suspension. I do have it in the sport mode. So we'll see. Uh, it does have the carbon brakes, so it should stop pretty well despite its heft. Throttle response is great. Initial bite on the brakes is great. The steering, it's, there's no slop in it. Like it's, you know, when you turn the wheel, it turns. No matter how fast or slow I'm going through a corner, it's the same 
strength to uh, to turn the wheel. So it's kind of just not great in that regard. The brakes are fantastic. Seems like 4,000 RPMs hits or 5,000 maybe. And uh, it, I don't know if it's got like variable valves or, but it seems to really punch in the higher RPMs. Man, I love how satisfying that click is. Just want to point out that it's uh, 69 degrees on the dashboard right now, outside. It's the nicest temperature of them all. It's the sexiest temperature of them all, too. It's very comfortable, even in sport mode. I mean, this is a fairly smooth road. The seats are comfortable. The leather is nice. It's a good exhaust note in here. You cannot hear the engine itself at all in here. All you can hear is the exhaust. So no matter how high up in the RPMs I get, you can't hear the engine itself. I personally enjoy hearing the engine itself as well as the exhaust note itself. I keep moving my seat on the damn things right here. Those controls, they either need like a lockout or they just need to be moved. I don't know why Aston does it. That is super annoying. I can't stand that. Um, I know I'm a little bit of a bigger fella, but I mean, most people, rest their leg against the center console anyway so even if you weighed 160 pounds if you rest your leg right there you're gonna have the exact same problem i have so i don't think that that's a big boy problem i just think that that's a stupidity problem on aston's part I, i'm really disappointed in the steering honestly it just it doesn't matter how sharp the turn is how fast i'm going how slow i'm going the steering feels exactly the same no matter what there is no feel to it. I mean, I get that it's a grand touring car and that they're going for, you know, luxury and comfort and all of that. But when you put the suspension in a sport mode, since the steering is electric, they should do something with the steering as well. Underwhelming in the steering department. I hate to say it. I like the rest of the car. I love the rest of the car, the sound the looks i think that these are the best looking cars ever made honestly i don't know if it ruins or not i kind of think it does just because it's so blah i mean there's nothing there there's nothing it's just like whatever so the computer let me get a little bit sideways but it did catch it whoa oh, god this seat man the seat these seat controls are terrible that does ruin it if the steering suspension doesn't ruin the driving experience of the car the seat controls ruin it all right youtube it's a pretty decent car and, and at the moment they're actually priced pretty reasonably for a v12 who knows what they're gonna do in the long run i don't know if like these are gonna eventually appreciate someday i just don't have confidence in that a grand tour so if your expect expectations are that of a grand tour i think you'll be pretty pleased but if you're expecting a very sporty car it leaves a little bit lacking we got some more cars coming for the dealership so we'll be showing those cars as soon as they come in but please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Visit normalguyssupercar.com. There you can support us, buy parts and services for your car. Use the code NGS10. It hooks you up with 10% off almost everything we sell. And go check out ngsupercars.com. See what cars we have for sale. If you need a car, let us know. Also, if you're trying to sell a car, get in touch with us. We're interested in buying cars that are off market and obviously they need to be priced right. Let us know what you got. Send us your VIN mileage and give us some pictures and let us know what you're asking for it and maybe we can work out a deal. That's gonna do it. We're gonna be doing a lot more cool car stuff. So you're gonna want to stay tuned. Eh, I mean, it's, it's going Martin. <laughs> we got nothing. <laughs> It'll be sweet. <laughs>